For our next unit in ceramics, we are going to be creating agate ware. Agate ware is the name of a special combination of two or more different colored clays. So you see here in this bowl, we have this brownish colored clay with the white. So there's the two minimum. There could be three or four different colors of clay bodies mixed together. Now these are two samples of agate ware uh, that have been formed. Here you see a student made bowl and this one is a vase. Both of these demonstrate a marbleized pattern where the two clay bodies swirl together yet remain separate enough that there is a strong contrast. Agate ware's name comes from an agate stone. The agate stone is a type of stone that when sliced reveals different layers and colors. With the agate ware clay, you can see both on the surface and when you slice it that there are different layers and bands of color. The appearance of the agate ware depends on the technique you use to create it. Now in this example here, this is soft fresh clay that has not been fired in the kiln yet and it um, still has a darkish gray color here with a red brown. This is the white ware that you're familiar with using in the classroom where it appears grayish before it's been fired. This brownish red, the rusty hue, is terracotta clay, T-E-R-R-A-C-O-T-T-A. -T -T it's a different type of clay body that's very rich in iron, hence the red color. When this clay has dried and been fired in the kiln, the white ware turns white as its bisque. Here are some examples. It's important that in order to, cre to create the best look on your agate ware that you shave the final version. So this is to show there is a side that has been shaved where all the impurities and the dust on the surface have been removed and then there's a side that has been unshaved and it has a duller contrast with sort of a um, dusty orange appearance over the white. Because when you're working with the clay and you start to get the terracotta on your hands as you're working with it, it's going to sort of muddy up the surface. If you don't shave it and glaze it, it might look okay, but it is not as nice as the final result if you first shave the clay, fire it, and then we finish it up with a clear glaze to really bring out the luster. So there's your comparison of the unshaved muddy surface versus the final shaved clean surface completed with a glaze. So to create agate ware, we will be working with fresh clay sliced off of the block. You will have a slice of whiteware clay and a slice of terracotta clay. We will be slicing and dicing and rolling these chunks out to create the final agate ware design depending on the technique that you wish to use. Normally in ceramics, I always teach my students to slip and score using some combination of tools the fresh clay pieces together so that when they dry they remain stuck together and fused. However, for the agate ware we will be combining our two different colors of clays and bonding them while they are still so fresh and moist that the clay really sticks to itself we are going to use what is known as compression to make sure that the two clays stick together. We will be pressing with a rolling pin. We will compress the two pieces of clay together so that the pressure combined with the moisture of the very fresh clay, pressure plus moisture will help the two pieces of clay bond together and become one that will not fall apart 
and that will be flexible and malleable so that we can shape it for our projects as well as shave it if we have the right tools because the agate wear, if you look at the surface here, the layers you can slice into it can reveal interesting new designs depending on how deeply you cut into the marbleized layers. It's hard to see there, but you can draw and shave bands into this if you so wish to reveal the under layers. Okay? That is agate wear.